Hello everyone, welcome back on the Agri Adventures YouTube channel and uh, on the 50 minutes interview with Agri Adventures. So uh, today we will have the opportunity to meet uh, Michael Scarpantoni. Michael Scarpantoni is uh, an Italian second generation migrant and uh, he is a wine producer and grape grower in uh, McLarenville. We will have the opportunity to speak with him about his winery, obviously Scarpantoni, but also another interesting business that he had been working on, which is Oxenberry Farm, again in McLaren Vale. 50 minutes interview, enjoy it. Hello everyone, welcome back on the Agri Adventures uh, YouTube channel, Facebook page, and on uh, Radio Italia Una Delaide. Uh, today we have a dear a friend and also uh, an entrepreneur from McLaren Vale, Michael Scarpantoni. Michael, welcome to the Egg Adventures channel. Thank you, Simone. It's always great to be with you. How are you today? How's it going over there? Oh, it's a beautiful day here in McLaren Vale. Okay, so Michael, um, as you know, I'm organizing a community market in uh, Radio Italiuna Delaide, but also the Agri Adventures project, it's uh, designed to promote local food producers in the South Australian market and possibly in the future overseas. So obviously you are a, a wine producer in McLaren Vale. When you uh, like you or your family moved here in South Australia? Um, yes, my father came to Australia in 1952 and he moved to McLaren Vale in 1954 and he commenced growing grapes uh, as a grape grower in about 1958. Oh, okay. So, not correct. You were starting from the beginning as a wine grapes producer and yes. winemaker. Okay, lovely. Yes. And um, would you like to tell us a little bit uh, more about why uh, they decide to move here in Australia? Do you know why? Why did my father decide to move to Australia? Uh, it was after the war. There wasn't much left in Italy. It was pretty destroyed after the war and there was no work. There was not a lot of future back then mm. in the early 50s. And uh, there was a lot of promise in Australia. Um, so he decided to take the big adventure at the young age of 21 years old and move, immigrate to Australia to see if he could make a life here. Wow, that was a big challenge. It was a big move, yes. Well, yeah. on his own, uh, came out all by himself. Um, he landed in uh, Melbourne and uh, in the camp, and uh, I've forgotten the name of the camp, but uh, it was a famous camp in Melbourne in 1952. And uh, almost immediately, he decided to go out on his own and try to find his way, uh, his own way in Australia. So he found work in uh, New South Wales. At Port Kembla, mm -hmm. and he moved up to the cane fields in uh, Queensland and did a season there. And then he moved to, uh, I think it was uh, Mildura mm -hmm. or the, somewhere in the uh, Riverland to do a vintage. And from there, he heard there was work in a region called McLaren Vale. And he moved here to find some more work, and he never left. Well, he found a good spot. And uh, what about you? I mean, so you are born and grew up in McLaren Vale, is that correct? Yes, I'm the eldest. Uh, we're all born and bred in McLaren Vale. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, we haven't been anywhere since. How many How many brothers and sisters do you have? Just for... have sisters and a brother, so there's four of us, and I'm oh, the wow. oldest. That, that's nice having a big family anyway. Your father business started to be a grower, great growers. Yes. And then you got his business and then you moved that into the winemaking. Is that correct? That's right. We took the next step. Uh, when, when I was old enough uh, to, to make a decision of what part I would play, uh, what I was going to do the rest of my life, uh, we decided that we would become winemakers. So we uh, built a winery in 1978. Mm-hmm and uh, started uh, 
cellar door uh, opening to the public in 79. And uh, that's what we've been doing ever since. Still grape growers, um, but also wine producers. Well, that is really good because you have a control of the wall production and you start from the soil and the grapes and then with those grapes you control the quality and you bring the quality into the bottle and the customer can taste the real McLaren Vale style from you know at least two generations that's just really cool mm. and so um, just for the people that's following us on the radio we are not just speaking about Oxenberry Farm but we are speaking about Scarpantoni wines because uh, maybe not everyone is aware or maybe it's the opposite so they are aware and they know you as a Scarpantoni winery but they don't know that you also have Oxenberry Farm now, why you decide later to get or have Oxenberry Farm? What's happened? Well, it's actually interrelated because um, my father's first vineyard and where I grew up was actually part of Oxenberry Farm, right? And in the 70s, my father purchased property in McLaren Flat where the Scarpentoni Winery now exists. And we moved there in the uh, late 70s. Right. And uh, that's where we started the winery and continue on our business. And he actually sold the vineyard here, McLaren Vale. And in the late 90s, my brother and I, uh, there was a winery and land came up for sale. And uh, we purchased it uh, at the time, not knowing that it was uh, our original property was part of the Oxenberry Farm. So we've come around sort of full circle. Okay, so I know I'm aware about that Oxenberry Farm has a long history over there. It probably was the first settlement in McLarenville. And mm. uh, it's really interesting because uh, um, you are, um, you're trying now for what I understood, you're trying to um, bring uh, a little bit back Oxenberry Farm known as uh, uh, the, the settlement of uh, the region. Is that right? Yes. Well, well when we purchased um, we, uh, the property, which was then called Maxwell, Maxwell Wines, uh, we knew full well that it was the oldest uh, establishment of McLaren Vale. The, the original homestead and farm was on this site. Uh, at the time, we didn't know that our original vineyard of McLaren Vale was actually part of the farm many years earlier and been subdivided and broken up over the uh, century. It, as it turned out, we discovered the full history of this property and uh, we've discovered that it was originally called Oxenbury, so we returned we return the name. Okay, that is, well, this is amazing. I mean, a lot of people that come to visit McLaren Vale, they go to the biggest one, but they don't know that there is a little gem hidden in the in the center of it that it should be probably the best place to start mm. if you want to come to visit i have a question like you produce wine for scarpantoni you use the same wine so do you use the same vineyards for scarpantoni and for oxenberry or do you have separate establishments uh we have about four or five vineyards in the McLaren vale so we do tend to use different vineyards for oxenberry and different vineyards for McLaren flat for Scarpentoni. Scarpentoni is mostly the vineyards that surround the winery and Oxenberry uses fruit from its own property mm -hmm. because there is a vineyard on at Oxenberry and uh, we either use other bits and pieces of other vineyards or we purchase some fruit from local growers. Okay so what's the style like Ox uh, Scarpentoni it's more uh, one style and Oxenberg is another. How the customer will find the differences? They are quite different. The Scarp and Tony wines are just an expression of the vineyards from McLaren Flat and mm -hmm. from the actual wine site, which are very different because the soil's different, the climate's slightly different, it's a bit more elevated, it's sandier soil, and it's up towards the uh, Adelaide Hills. Uh, Whereas Oxenberry is a deliberate attempt expressing the best of McLaren Vale. So we search out the best parcels of fruit and uh, it's 
pretty much all red wine because that's that's what McLaren Vale is known for. Mm -hmm. So we focused on naturally Shiraz. Uh, Grenache is a good variety here. So we use a little bit of Grenache in our different wines, plus the new varieties which we think um, could have potential in McLaren Vale, like Tempranillo. We use a little bit of Cabernet. Um, Sauvignon Blanc, we make a little bit of white and a little bit of Sauvignon Blanc. And of course, but that's sourced from McLaren Flat but we make it in a different style completely from the Scarf and Tony wine. Okay. And yeah. uh, is it a big production? No. No, all the wines here, very small production. Cellar door only, basically sales. So we're just concentrating on making small parcels of top-end wines that people can enjoy by coming to the cellar door here or the winery. Okay. And, so uh, it's really ex exclusive, uh, unique wine that they want to bring the style of McLarenville available to the local mm. they're coming to visit and so the people that will come in uh, in uh, the community market they will have the opportunity to, to try something that they will be able to have only coming over in the Clarenvale that is really is really nice uh, and um, mm. so you're trying to create a place where people can uh, experience the best of McLaren Vale here in Oxenberry Farm. Do you offer any other services that people could access? Um, well, obviously we have a cafe here and accommodation. So um, the cafe is a, a all day brunch that so we like to keep things very casual, very light. People can come in all day long, have simple meals. Mm -hmm. uh, and enjoy the wines by the glass or purchased by the bottle. Um, enjoy the, the surroundings and the, the beauty of the uh, spot, mm -hmm. which is the reason they chose it for the first settlement. Obviously, the first people here took the best spot, and Definitely. it's a beautiful spot because it's right next to the Peddler's Creek. It's got a billabong, permanent water, and it's always green and always lush. Other thing we offer, of course, is that we've restored the original homestead and uh, and people can actually come and stay in the first house in McLaren Bar. Wow, okay. Yeah, I had a small search online and I've seen that your accommodations, they are probably one of the best rated in uh, um, in the different platforms. So you over there, you have a place where people can come to enjoy a day out or they can come to stay for longer, taste uh, classic McLarenville uh, wine uh, styles and enjoy the surrounding because you're actually in the middle of McLarenville. So everybody from there, they can have a little walk and visit other places without being worried about to get transportation. This is really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, so if, if somebody will be interested to purchase Oxenberry wine, can they access other platform? Like, do you have a website or places that they can? Yes, we have a, a website, which is everything on it is online. They can book accommodation online and uh, they can also book for lunch. And uh, the, I've seen also you have a Facebook page, which is uh, Oxenberry Wine uh, and Pedal Cottage. Is that correct? That's right, yes. Okay. Perfect. So if somebody's interested to know more about uh, like Oxenberry, they can come to visit the website. Uh, they can see the Facebook page if you have events or things are happening. Now, for what I understood, you got in Oxenberry, you've done that because there was a connection between your childhood in uh, McLaren Vale. Where would you like to bring or where would you like to go uh, with this project in the near future? What's your dream for Oxenberry Farm? Um, I'd like to expand a little bit further. Uh, we have, uh, I think, we could probably put a little bit more accommodation here because it's a beautiful spot to stay. We have a wetland area, which I'd like to build some eco accommodation in that area. We've already got, uh, as we mentioned before, three different uh, accommodation spots. Um, the last of which was the, uh, the restoration of Duringa, which is, uh, was an extensive restoration, which took over five years to bring the house back to its original or better than its condition. And it's now truly a five-star accommodation. And uh, just focus on the wines a bit more in the future. Mm -hmm. A bit more experimenting to do. Just try to focus on what we can get the best out of uh, from this region. And uh, also for, uh, like, I know that uh, there is a team over there of workers and there are families actually 
that they are relying on uh, these opportunities that you are providing because that's another important thing which is agri adventures is focused on support local food producers because those mm. food producers they are supporting the community so they are local people they are working in the area they are coming over there they have stability of life they have an income that uh, through oxenberry or through scarpantoni help them to strive in the life and to pass these different these difficult times also okay michael so thank you very much for your time over here on agri adventures and on radio italia una delaide and uh, we'll have opportunity to try uh, your wine during the community market, but also we are be able to come over and visit. That's right. Yes. Well, we're open now, so you can always come. Okay. Thank you very much for this interview and see you the next time. All right. Thank you, Simone. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Ciao, Michael. Ciao. Well, uh, I hope that you enjoyed the interview. It was really um, interesting to learn more uh, from uh, uh, Michael regarding his father's choices to come in Australia, why, and um, uh, the uh, business that he, they, they decide to develop starting from grape growing and in, in uh, wine production. And as we said, they are offering more than just wine, it's accommodation, it's a, a cafe, so they have a bit more of hospitality involved. And uh, they are in McLarenville, so they're not really far away and we can easily go to visit them, unless you're following the program from overseas. In that case, you may one day will come to visit. Have a great day from Simone. This was a 50 minutes interview on Agri Adventures YouTube channel, Facebook and Radio Italia 1 Adelaide. Ciao, a presto.